I'm Michael O'Hare, ex-CEO, philanthropist, all-round life coach, and the author and founder of the worldwide acclaimed Best in Business Seminar Series. Welcome. I am the Black Belt of Business. Enter my dojo. Hiya! Every week, I'll be answering your questions live the same time every week. If you want to see more Best in Business videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the bell icon to get notifications of my latest videos and live sessions. And finally, if you think others could perhaps benefit from this, maybe as a mandatory course or some form of other intensive training, please feel free to let them know. Before I start this week, I would like to uh, put a, a, uh, a shout out to, uh, well, a very kind lady uh, called Anne Dubrovsky. You were probably wondering, what was I nibbling on when uh, I first started the feed? Well, Anne Dubrovsky in Warsaw, Poland, um, sent me some salted wild boar, which was very nice. And she said, I hope this gets you through the current crisis, Michael. Well, thank you very much, Anne. Uh, when it's all over, hopefully we can meet up and I can return the favor and you can taste my salted pork as well. Uh, so thanks very much, Anne. Our first question this evening comes is an email from Stephen Handenfuss, who is an accountant. And he says, Michael, how do I negotiate for a pay rise? You don't negotiate. You demand. You're aggressive. You're unrelenting. You never let it drop. Every conversation you ever have with your boss should be about it. For example, it could be at the start or a very busy meeting in front of a lot of people. When my pay rise takes effect, or it might be at a very opportune time when nobody else is around. About my pay rise. Standing next to him in the bathroom. Now, if that doesn't work, then you can go with a nuclear option. I normally find just threatening people with leaving, I'm going to leave tomorrow unless you give me a pay rise, always works. Try it. Always, always works without fail. <laughs> and then you'll find out well, whether that pay rise is coming next week or next tomorrow. <laughs> So thanks very much, Stephen Handenfuss. My next email is from uh, Bust in Business. Oh, that's a, a very flattering. She or he says, hi, Michael. Love the live session. Uh, what are your top five ways to suppress your libido in the office? Um, well, um, raw onion skin on the top lip, um, frozen petit pois on the genitalia, um, sniffing cumin spice, uh, rubbing the back of my ear with three fingers in a rotating fashion for one minute, and a spoonful of plain tepid yogurt before bed. Uh, so hopefully that staves off any HR cases in the future for you bust in business. Um, so we'll be taking some live questions tonight, uh, so feel free to send them through as and when you get them in your head. Um, my next email is from somebody called Hank Lewis in Washington, D.C. Dear Mr. O'Hare, um, actually, I've got a, an honorary doctorate in African hospital management, so I don't like to broadcast that. But anyway, as you probably know, due to the current pandemic, the global economy is being hit hard. I run a mid-sized company selling small plastic toys to adults. But I'm unsure what the future holds for us. Any small advice for businesses at this time? Yes, sell, sell, and sell. Aside from essential workers, people who work in hospitals, care homes, or indeed supermarkets, um, you have the entire human race at home, right? They are stuck with absolutely nothing to do but buy pointless products and services, bored out of their mind with itchy fingers. So you sell, you said, small plastic toys to adults. Hank, this is your only time in the human history that you will be able to sell all manner of crazy old crap to anybody. So, I mean, no offense, but you've got to get out there right now and start selling like you've never sold before. Get them all out there, all those little toys, whatever they happen to be. Uh, you sent me a link to your website. Extraordinary stuff there. Uh, but good luck and good selling. Hank Lewis from Washington. My next question is from a Todd McGraw in Omaha, Nebraska. And he says, hi, Michael. As a global executive, you've probably now had to go through the process of hot desking, 
where organizations reduce their costs by removing fixed desks for junior staff. Hmm. However, my company has just introduced this. Is there any way I can get out of hot desking and ensure I have my own permanent fixed desk? Well, Todd, one word. Disability. In the 1970s and early late 60s, it was perfectly acceptable to smack a man with glasses in the face. This progressed to the 1980s, where disabilities were seen as limps, or crooked hands, bent necks, or indeed the odd occasional boss eye. But in the 21st century, there's no need for that anymore, since the emergence of the hidden disability. It's very highly effective. There's no need for sympathy-seeking, exaggerated, and pronounced gates anymore. When approached by anybody asking you to move, my advice would be to use the following phrase. Not all disabilities are visible. They won't touch you with a barge pole. They'll run 10 yards away from you. And indeed, you may even find yourself receiving a complimentary footrest and a small soft cushion for your lower back. So, Todd, give that a go and see if you're actually hot desking in the future. We're getting uh, quite a few questions in. I've had a few emails. Uh, and apologies in advance. I have received emails in the, the couple of sessions previously that I've not got round to. I will get them. For example, I had received one question about what is the appropriate time to spend on the toilet uh, during work hours? I will get to that one. Um, had one from Martin Connaughton. Hi, Michael. Many of my employees take their sweet time when, vis ah, this is it, when visiting the bathroom during office hours. How do I know if they're taking a piss? Or taking the piss. <laughs> oh, that is that is brilliant. Um, well, the answer is you can find out. Um, at Best in Business, I installed last year um, some small webcams to ensure that people were in sh doing the number ones or the number twos. Uh, I did catch a couple of um, obscene uh, videos, which I have saved onto my hard drive uh, in case of any criminal events later on, or indeed for blackmail purposes, should I need to use that. Um, the answer is install cameras. That is the only way you'll ever know, or indeed uh, you could be quite old style and put a little couple of uh, holes in the side cubicles. I once uh, used those. Uh, unfortunately, something uh, once poked me in the eye back. Um, so uh, you do have to be a bit careful with those. So hopefully that helps you with that one. Um, NM, I have said like a rapper name, um, says, hello, Michael. Are there any exercises you can suggest to help people keep their business acumen sharp during this time of relaxed working from home? Well, there should never be relaxed working from home. It should be more intense. You haven't got colleagues to disturb you. You haven't got to get up and make yourself a cup of tea or coffee. You haven't got to stand at the water cooler. You're there at your desk and your bed's next to you. Um, but my suggestion would be to uh, perhaps watch my video, Balance Sheet Squats. Uh, it's on the YouTube channel. Um, I may do a few more of those exercise videos, should people wish. But check out that one, the Balance Sheet Squats. And that will definitely keep you uh, sharp in mind, uh, but also quite a pongy office as well, unless you uh, fragment it afterwards. Um, right, so the next message is a LinkedIn message. Uh, it says, Dear Michael, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm looking to secure a promotion in my finance division by the end of the year. Fantastic. However, I can't stop staring at my colleague Tim's crotch whenever I see him. I want him so bad. Is there anything I can do to stop this? Regards, Matthew Johnson. Now, gaze, gaze, gaze in fine. Great. Good for you. Uh, but, but the rules still apply to anyone. They apply to anyone, Matthew, regardless of your sexual orienteering. Um, but unfortunately, you can't fight it as defense lawyer for some of the Hollywood's most uh, senior and executive movie producers, Tony Levino, once said, lust in the workplace cannot be stopped. So my advice would be continue doing it. Embrace it. But make it look like something else. Make it look like you're being pensive. You're considering. You're weighing up your next business proposal. You don't understand? Watch this. Let's go with that. Now, you probably thought there that I was actually deep 
in pensive mode. But actually, I was imagining uh, my junior intern's very sizable and ample cleavage. Uh, you wouldn't have guessed. But let me show you again. I'm looking pensive. But actually, I'm ogling. Let's go with that. So, possibly you might want to just continue staring, look at his crutch, embrace it, think about it, but morph it into a kind of pensive and weighing up, considering face. Um, so, try this approach, and I hope you get your Eiffel and your promotion, Matthew, in your finance division. Thanks for your email or your LinkedIn message. Okay, I have a twif Twitter message from uh, at Muffin My Face. Uh, dear Michael, love best in business and the videos. Thank you very much. I am currently applying for a new job in a corporate banking organization. Oh, this is music to my ears. One of the requirements of the role is being able to work well with other people in a team. Do you think I am a highly experienced team player if I've been a regular and very active participant at my local swingers club? And they have swent in a picture. Good Lord, there's, there's so much going on here. And, and we, you definitely like getting your hands dirty. Yeah, and you're mucking in, that's good. And you're used to working with older people too, <laughs> and pets. Um, so, so, so yes, um, what I would say is, yes, if your experience has it, put it on your application. I, I, what I wouldn't do is send the picture in. Um, it's hard to, to work out from your picture where one person starts and the other ends. It looks like you're reenacting a scene from the human centipede. Um, but yes, good work experience, good team player experience, stick it on your application. Um, we have a chance for a f one more, I think. One more email, unless there's some come through on the text, uh, from a Michelle Morris in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, she says... Hi, Michael. It would be good to get your thoughts on gifts and hospitality in the workplace. Our organizational policy is that we should either decline gifts from clients or hand them in. The company then auctions them off for a local children's charity. However, I recently received a very expensive gift from a client, which I absolutely love. Do I really have to declare it and hand it in? Uh, well, classic, for those who don't know, classic corporate gifts uh, include things like Rolex watches, uh, Mont Blanc pens, ticks to the theaters, to Cuban cigars, a case of wine, champagne. Um, it's how business is done. It greases the wheels. It smooths the deal. It lubes the pipes. Um, gifts are always used to facilitate any important business deal and still used in many parts of the world today. Um, I, of course, uh, being the best in business, have received many interesting gifts over the years as a result of my successful business deals. Um, a sequin ball gown, uh, a golden melon, a murderer's finger, uh, and a door knocker of sausage meat. Uh, but my favorite was a carved wooden horse, which I kept in my private office for several years. Um, however, it did become very awkward to hold meetings in my office because it was an actual size replica of a dressage champion. Um, but I did used to sit bareback on it and sit back and be considerate of my impending business transactions. Uh, it was a great place to sort of sit and ponder. Um, so I throw it back to you, Michelle. What's ethically better? Freely accepting those complimentary yearly membership tickets to an exclusive and discreet gentleman's private club or auctioning them off to a local blind children's charity. You decide. And that brings us to a close. Thank you very much indeed for joining us for some more questions, live B&A questions, B&A, uh, Q&A questions. Uh, we're here every Sunday at this time. Subscribe on the YouTube channel uh, and click the bell bell icon to give you a reminder um, and keep sending your questions in. Uh, they are really are great and hopefully I can improve your career and your promotion chances. See you in the enter the dojo of business. Hiya, next week, next Sunday. Thanks very much for watching.